Advanced Financial Accounting Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to foreign currency remeasurement AICPA adopted. Get ready to account Advanced Financial Accounting. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the worksheet in the blue area on the right-hand side. So let's take a look at what we have. We have the foreign currency remeasurement AICPA adopted. On 11X0P, which is going to be the parent, formed a foreign subsidiary that issued all of its outstanding common stock. So we have the parent company, which created the fully owned, 100% owned uh, subsidiary on 11 x0 that subsidiary being in a foreign country and therefore conducting their books in a foreign currency we're going to be needing to get them over to cash in some way shape or form so that we can do the consolidation process so then we have some selected accounts that we will be dealing with for 2000 x0 2000 x1 foreign currency being indicated by the lak and the dollar by the dollar sign so these are just some of the accounts, accounts receivable, inventories, property, plants, and equipment. Those are the ones we're going to be focusing in on. Then we have the relevant dates and exchange rates. So we got, it's kind of like uh, we're going from the $1 to the foreign currency. So we'll take a look at that exchange rate as we work through the problem. We have some more detail related to the accounts receivable as well as the allowance for uncollectible accounts. More detail related to inventory, including the fact that it's using a first in first out method and then the inventory calculation beginning balance plus purchases equals goods available for sale minus the ending balance. That's cost to goods sold. Then we have the purchase that took place on land or the purchase of land probably took place on land too but of land on january 1st x0 and then we also had property plants and equipment purchased on january 1st x0 we purchased on 74 x1 uh more equipment on in the following year De depreciable life is going to be 10 years uh full year of depreciation taken in year of purchase then on 11 x0 the bond issued we had uh, the percentage rate was 7%, face values 150,000. It matures on 115x6, interest paid on July 15th and January 15th, first payment made July 15th, 2000x0. So make schedule remeasuring the selected accounts into the US dollar. We're going to be using remeasurement rather than translation due to the fact that the books are going to be in the foreign, um, the books are going to be. The functional currency is the U.S. dollar. So in other words, we have the parent company, subsidiaries in another country. The books are being done in a foreign currency. The question is, do we do we uh, translate or remeasure uh, to the U.S. dollar? That's typically the two scenarios. It's possible to have another scenario where the, it's in a foreign currency and um, and that's not the functional currency, nor is the U.S. dollar. But usually the, the scenario would be it's in a foreign currency. The question is, uh, is the functional currency the U.S. dollar or is it the foreign currency that the books are in? In this case, it's the U.S. dollar because the foreign, current, the foreign company is more related, tied to in some ways to the parent company. Typically, that would be some of the scenario for more detail on that. You can take a look at prior presentations. But therefore, we're going to be using the remeasurement principle rather than the uh, translation so we're going to be doing a remeasurement process rather than a translation process okay so we're going to start off with uh, 1231x0 and then we're just going to go through these accounts here we're going to start off with the accounts receivable accounts receivable on uh, x0 so the end of the year this is a balance sheet date uh, that we're, we're typically going to be using and typically here for the receivable we use the end of the time period so that usually would be december so I'm looking for, this happened on uh, 11x0 to 71x0. That's, uh, that's not going to be it. We're looking for 111x0 to 630x0. That includes 1231. So that's the one we want. I'll be picking up then the 1.7. So we'll pick up the 1.7. Now I'm going to have to divide to, to work this out because notice what it is. It's $1 uh is to 1.7 foreign currency units or 1.7 currency units to one dollar so i'm dividing this out so i'm going to take the foreign currency units divided by uh this rate and there we have the 20,588. then we're going to take the inventory so we'll pick up the inventory now with the inventory because we're looking at remeasurement i'll be picking up the amount here which is going to be the 67,000. we're usually looking for a historical cost if possible right so we're looking for basically a historical. So we need to know when 
the inventory was purchased if we go down to our information for the first in first out information here we see there's no beginning balance purchases happened on uh, 620 x0 so we're looking for uh, 620 x0 so we have exchange rates from 11 x0 to 71 x0 we're going to be using that two then for this item again historical basically rate that's the point that you want to take because it's a remeasurement as opposed to a translation. So 67,000 divided by that 0.2, that's going to give us the 33.5. Then we're picking up the property plant and the equipment. Property plant and the equipment and the amount for the 173,000, 173,000 property plants and equipment. Similar kind of principle here is that we need to take the rates at the point in time that the purchase happened. So we're going to go on down and say, well, when did the purchase happen? Well, it happened on January 1st, X0 for the land and property plants and equipment. So we're looking for the rate on 11X0, which again is going to be that $2 because that went from 11X0 to 71X0. So we're picking that $2. $2 once again for the exchange rate. Picking up the $2, and then we're going to be dividing this out. We're going to say the 173,000 divided by the $2 is going to be the 68,000. Then we want the long-term debt. We're looking at the long-term debt. Looking at you, long-term debt. That's what we're on now. We're going to be picking up the amount, which is going to be 150,000. Then uh, we will pick up the rate again. Typically, with the long-term debt, we're going to use kind of like the default balance sheet rule. I would think about it. The default balance sheet rules is that we use the date at the end of the period because that's the point in time the balance sheet is unless we're going to use like a historical date uh, type of transaction. So so that means we're going to be using this 1.7 because that's includes the 1231 point in time that we're looking at. So we want to be picking up the 1.7 and there we have it. Then we're going to divide this out. This is going to be equal to the 150,000 divided by the 1.7. So there's the 88,235. Then we're going to pick up the common stock. So we'll pick up the common stock and that's going to be for the 65,000. So we're looking 65,000 for the common stock. Now the common stock uh, was issued because the parent created the subsidiary, which was a fully owned uh, subsidiary. So the common stock went out at the, when that happened, which happened at the beginning of the year. No other common stock went out since that point in time. So this is going to be the date basically at the beginning of the time period. So we're looking beginning time period, which is going to include the one 1x0. So we're going to pick up that $2 again. So the 65,000 divided by that $2 is going to be the 32.5. Okay, let's do the same thing for 1231x1. Uh, so now we're looking x1. And we'll pick up the receivable again. Look at receivable this time for the x1 numbers. So we got the 30, the 40,000 is we're going to be starting with. And once again, we typically use the end end of the year here so we're looking end of period date which is going to be here this one because it includes the 1231 x1 the 1.5 so that's the typical rule default rule for accounts receivable default balance sheet rule end of the end of the year end of the time period when the balance sheet is as of of so that's going to be the 26 667 then we want uh, the inventories so now we're looking inventories and we're going to be saying, all right, inventories are 72,000. Now we're going to be looking historical if, if possible. Inventory is a little bit tricky. It can be a little bit tricky because inventory, you know, when, when was the historical rate? So we're going to go down and look at, we have first in, first out is what's being used. And we're looking at a 6 one hat, which had 67,000. At the beginning, we're assuming that those were sold first because it's first in, first out. And then we have the 340,000, which was purchased on, on 6 2000 X1. So we would assume then that the, the beginning purchases have cleared out now, given the fact that we're using first in, first out. And the purchases that took place on 3 uh, on 6 2000 X1 of this 340, is what is still included in the 72,000 that's still there at the end of the time period. So the purchase then of what's included there at the end of the time period is the purchase that took place on 61X1. 
So we're looking for a rate here, the 7.1, because it's gonna, it's, it's including the uh, 6 2000 X1 in it. So the 7.1 is what we want, bottom line. The line on the bottom says that. So then we're gonna then take the 72,000 divided by the 1.7. There we have that. Now we're gonna be picking up the property planting equipment, property planting equipment. Uh, here we go. Now we want the amount is for the 187.5. Now this one just got a little bit more confusing because we usually look like we usually usually use the historic cost, but now we have two years of data since the subsidiary was made, and there was some of the property plants and equipment purchased last time, and now this time. So it's got a little bit more complex. So we're gonna have to use we're gonna go down to the table down below to get to the more complexities. Uh, related to that but before we do that let's go ahead and finish up the rest of them we're going to go to the long-term debt then long-term debt we're going to be picking up the 130,000 for 2000 x uh x1 <laughs> and then we usually use the rate once again at the end of the year so that's going to be the end of the year rate which is because this is the debt so that's the default balance sheet kind of rate that we use and that's going to be the 1.5 because that's what it was. That rate was included in the time frame, which includes 1231x1. So we're picking up the uh, 1.5, dividing that out. Here's the 130,000 divided by the 1.5. Then we're going to pick up the common stock. So the common stock, we'll pick up the common stock. And that's going to be for the 65,000 in x1 and now we're going to use the beginning of of the time period rate so so and again there's been no change in the common stock for this entire time period since it was originally issued uh w when this whole thing started in 2000 x1 so we're actually going to be using the uh two here for the common stock and then we're going to say this is going to be equal to the 65,000 divided by that 2. There's the 32,500 for that. All right, now we're going to get into the property plant and the equipment. Property plant and the equipment. So we're going to, we're going to start off with the land purchase. Land purchase, which is uh, happened on 11x0. So land purchase was for the 20,000. And the rate as of that point in time was the two. So we'll pick up the two here because that, that was at one, one X zero again. That's the rationale. We're going to be taking the 20,000 now divided by that number two. So there we have that. And then we're going to take a look at the plant and equipment, including the purchase that happened on one, one X zero. Let's pick up the then uh, original cost, which is going to be equal to the 170,000. It's down here somewhere. The 170. Now, this has depreciation related to it, so we're going to have to deal with that. But the original cost was that. That happened again. We're using that point, that $2, because it happened on 11x0. We're using like historical rate, the historical rate. 170,000 divided by that 2, 85,000 on the original cost. And then we've got the depreciation, depre 20x0, and it was 10 years, you'll recall. So I'm going to take that 100, I'm going to make it a negative. Let's make it a negative. That'll be better. So equals negative or negative of that 170,000 divided by the useful life, which we had down here which was 10 years, useful life 10 years. So that's gonna give us the 17,000, 170,000 divided by 10. We're gonna be using the same rate. I'll just pick up the same rate here because these things are like linked together kind of. So 170,000 or 17,000 divided by the two, that's gonna be the 8,500. So that's the de depreciation for 2000 X zero and then depreciation for 2000 X uh, one is gonna be basically the same, right? We got the same same thing happening here because we're using straight line, keeping it simple, keeping it simple with the straight line. 
And then if we sum these up, that, that's going to give us what's left over here, what's on the books after the depreciation for the two years. So I'm going to sum this up, which will subtract it. 170,000 minus 17,000 minus 17,000 equals the sum of... Uh, something funny happened. My fingers aren't in the right place. Sum of the 170 minus the 17 and 17. Okay, and then you could bring the 2 down and then say equals the sum of these items. Or you could have calculated it as this uh, divided by this because we didn't have any funny thing happening with using like different exchange rates up top. So either method will work given the fact that we have the same rates, which is nice. It's nice when we can do that. I don't like when they start switching, when the rates start switching around and you got f different rates. It's just, it, it is what it is, you know, but uh, when that doesn't happen, a little bit easier. All right. So then we have the original cost for the purchase that happened on 1-1-X-1. One, one one. So let's check that one on 7-1-X-1, one one, I should say, because that would be the proper thing to say when the last thing I said was wrong. And so we're going to be picking up the 35000 35,000. We want the uh, rate as of the date that that uh, was purchased took place. And when did that happen? So we're going to be picking up, it's happened on 74x1. So let's take a look at the rates on 74x1. We're picking up then uh, this item because 74x1 is included. So 1.5. 1.5 let's divide this out the 35,000 divided by the 1.5 then we're going to be picking up the depreciation depre 20x1 now you'll recall that even though it was purchased on 71 we're using a full year's depreciation in the year of purchase so we're just going to divide it by 10 again so i'm going to be saying negative of 35,000 divided by the 10 so we'll scroll on down picking up the 10 and the rate then is going to be the same 1.5 because these are kind of like related again so the 3500 uh, divided by the 1.5 is going to give us the 2333 then we'll sum these up which will actually subtract them out so summing up the 35 and the 3005 which will actually subtract them out to the 315 and then doing the same thing for the 23333 and the 20 and the 2333 which will actually subtract those out to give us the 21. And again, you could use the 1.5 and calculate this this way as well. The 35, the 31.5 divided by the 1.5, giving us the same number. So at the end of the day, then end of the day, we're currently at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, it's going to be this uh, 20,000 plus the 136,000 plus the 31.5 for uh, the foreign currency units and then we're going to have in the dollars the 10,000 plus because that's for the land the other piece of equipment and then the second piece of equipment at the 99,000 and so when we go up here we want to pick up the 99,000 so we're going to be picking up then this 99,000 in our worksheet to uh, to tie those out and that's going to be it so main thing here is we had notice we had two years worth of data looking into here so the historical cost can get a little bit more confusing practice prior problems we've been looking at just the one year uh, of data with it and of course we're using the remeasurement here as opposed to the translation which has some more of that historical cost stuff that we're going to be using which can make things a bit more complex